This is the Dr. Lambert Podcast, episode number 191, originally recorded a couple of times throughout the uh, well, June, July of 2021. Yes, in this podcast, I am going to be doing, th- well, we have got three different things going on. First off, we will transition to portion of the podcast that myself, Liam, and Humphrey recorded just the other day, where we talked about the Jody Whitaker, Chris Chibnall situation and the future of the show. Then I am going to be recording my review of the Missy Titan comic issue number four. And then I will play portions of the Road to 200 interview that uh, Legion mostly conducted with Liam um, interviewing him. Just, you know, not some uh, fantastic, amazing, blow your socks off bits, but just, just bits, just into themselves some of them might be short some of them might be long but uh, yeah so with that being said i am going to turn the time over to well our discussion for uh, the chibnall jody uh news that just barely came down not that long ago so let's talk the biggest news in doctor who fandom the elephant in the room the the, the, the yes <laughs> i i think I think it's something that needs to be brought up with and well, actually, before we talk about that, let's first talk about and I have seven clips to play. Let's talk about the series 13, the the online San Diego Comic Con that featured, uh, you know, the, the, the new TARDIS crew and I will say kind of going forward. I I sat through, I watched it. I will say, very interesting thing. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I watched it yesterday. I watched it twice. I ripped sound from it. You have more patience than me then. I will tell, interesting thing. So San Diego Comic-Con or the online Comic-Con, whatever they want to call themselves right now, has turned off all comments on mm-hmm. that, it, like as of when I was watching it, I believe fifty-eight thousand people had watched that. At least that's how many views it, it they claimed to have had. And I don't think you can fake views. I don't know how no. long people have been watching the whole thing, but they've turned off all comments. The like to dislike ratio is now hidden, so. <laughs> You can uh. downvote it or upvote it all you want. The only people that know what the actual ratio is is the Comic Con themselves. So wow, that's interesting. That that speaks volumes, mm-hmm. I think. Well, and and here's the thing: because when it when it dropped, I was on uh, I part of the Doctor Who gr- fan group on Facebook. There was some good conversation that was going on you know you have uh, obviously you have some people who hate everything you have some people who uh-huh. like everything and then i feel as though you had really good conversation with people who say it like it is like one of the comments was in fact i didn't realize it but i i found out that one of my really close friends is also a Doctor Who fan through this Facebook fan page, and I read his comment. Didn't even know he watched Doctor Who. No clue. Mm. But he oh, wow. uh, he posted on the, the, the fan page basically saying, I'm hopeful for Series 13. It's a shame that the past two seasons series have been bad, and it all is not Jody's fault it is all due to the writing. And it's just like, I'm so grateful we can hear it because you know, some people say it's all Jody's fault. Some people say it's all Chibnall's fault. Maybe it's a mixture of both. But the thing that annoys me whenever we're talking about this is either every, some people, it's all bad. And then on the other side, everything is all good. And I appreciate when fans can say, Yes, this there is some good, but that yeah, there is some bad. I like that there can be a middle ground in certain things, and yes. who knows? Maybe the the comments were turned off because it was being barrage hated, and that was the maybe. reason. I I don't know. I I, I maybe. I, I, 
But uh, here's the first clip. This is the very, uh, really close to the very beginning of the, the panel. So here's the first clip. Chris, let's talk about all the changes that Team Targus is going to undergo. What can you tell us about the new season? I can tell you that we pick it up um, with the Doctor and Yaz, who've been traveling together for some time, and we come in and meet them mid-adventure. Um, and then they um, stumble across a man called Dan Lewis. Um, that's all I'm going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's much more than you thought, isn't it? <laughs> um, but I can tell you that it's probably the, the, the big thing that we're going to be doing this year is it's all one story. So every episode is a chapter in a bigger story. Um, and so we've changed the shape of the series for this year. And why did you decide to tell the story this way? Well, um, it's a very much not a business as usual time. And um, I think the challenges of getting the show up and running, because there were times when, before we started making it, that we didn't know whether we'd be able to make the show under COVID conditions this year. So everybody's pulled together to um, make that possible. And so what we've done is, in, there were two ways you could go. You can go, well, we're just going to do lots of tiny episodes in one room with no monsters. Or we can throw down the gauntlet and go, we're going to do the biggest story we've ever done. Um, and we're going to go to all kinds of different places. We're going to have all kinds of characters and monsters. And it's all going to be part of a bigger whole. I think it's definitely the most ambitious thing we've done since we've been on the series, would you yeah. say? It's, um, it's, pretty, it's pretty epic and ambitious. And we do go to a lot of places. <laughs> I I thought the whole oh uh they're gonna meet the guy called Dan Lewis and that's all I'm gonna tell you and then the I don't know the whole that whole forced laugh thing was a bit mm, what interesting though that it's all one big arc like trial that's gonna be potentially interesting could go either one or two ways could be really 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 good or it could be utterly awful i mean unfortunately this is chris chibnall so that doesn't well i think there's more chance of it being middling to meh than you know anything mind-blowing so you know it, it could surprise who knows but as i say you'll have to let me know because i am not watching series 13 okay what do you think humphrey I'm intrigued by the whole one story uh, idea, actually, the whole sort of big arc thing. I think, like Liam, it could work well or not. But what could be good, let's just think for a minute if that format is successful, is that what they could start doing is maybe rather than one big long series per year, they could do it a little bit more like the classic series. It would probably be a bit more divided up, but they could even have like uh, two or three sort of mini series, if you like, within a year. So you'd have like six weeks and then a break, six more weeks. I think that could potentially be an interesting way of doing it, actually. And I think... I'd I don't think they will, though. No, but it's it's an interesting mm -hmm. way of doing mm -hmm. it because uh, Humphrey's read my mind. I when I heard one big gigantic you know story, I was like, you know, what they could do, and along the lines of what Humphrey was saying, is I would like, and I know you don't have like the commercial breaks over there, but what they could do, and I think would be really fun, is you take the first three stories and you know, they're 40-ish minutes long, build it to the classic episode story range where essentially this would be one of those six parters where the first 20 minutes would be part one, the second 20 minutes would be part two. You'd have, you could, if you really wanted to, sequence it out for a break or something like that and possibly even have you know, two segments of Doctor Who, you know, they, you know, get the commercial break over here or whatever, but you, you build it up to the cliffhanger for that part. 
And you essentially, instead of having one story that is six episodes long, you would have you could have two stories that are three episodes long, but when broken down into half hour segments, are actually six episodes long, kind of like the old Who. I would I would be all for that because then they could tell sort of there would be less stories, but they might be more interesting stories because they would have more time to play with. Well, you're right. And then, and here's what, you know, the, the shame of them doing this is I like that, you know, there is going to be a gap from the, the Christmas or the, the new year special between here, uh, you know, the, the doctor and Yaz have been traveling together for a while. So they've given a buffer zone. Now, again, here's the sad part is where has Yaz's um, character development been happening? Off, Off screen. screen. Like, you know, mm. going into the New Year's episode, where was Yaz's... Like, she had no character, really, for two seasons. And then she had this massive character development, but it happened between the end of Series 12 and the beginning of the New Year's special. Well, now we have them traveling together for a while, establishing a relationship, but all of that stuff has happened off screen. The thing is, though, right, they say that, and what she's been doing for the past two years, or however long she's been traveling, why do they need to build a relationship? Like, isn't that kind of glaringly obvious? Chip has gone, oh, crap, I haven't used her very well. I've not given her anything to do. I need to rectify that. Do you see what I mean? Well, I, I do see what you mean, but here's the problem. Chibnall's a bad writer, and he didn't think about that. Yep. Yep. Uh, mm. All right, here's a second clip. Now, this is out of order because the third clip actually comes before this one, but I felt mm -hmm. um, it would fit better here. So here is the second clip. So Chris, I think it goes without saying, but why was Jacob the perfect choice to play Vinder? Uh, yeah, well, uh, I'd written him for him before in Broadchurch, and obviously you'd worked with him there as well. But he's a brilliant human being, as you can see from that clip. Obviously, he, everybody knows him from his work on Game of Thrones. Obviously, everybody, people know him from his work as a musician as well, Rally Ritchie. So I was thinking about this character and he was the first name who came to mind. I sort of wrote it for him and then, and then pitched it to him and, you know, begged him and um, sent it to him, talked to him a lot. And, and he just has, he has that humanity you saw there, that warmth, but he can also play an action hero and he can, he makes you, root for him and he breaks your heart and he's, he's got the whole range he's just brilliant i think i think the thing that i'm kind of getting a little bit fed up with all this is everybody he's choosing to cast has worked on bloody broad church yeah yeah and it's just like oh come on can we can we have other people who have done other things apart from Broadchurch. Look at the first four series with RTD. You know, he pulled from all over the shop, from yeah. Russell Tovey to, to, to Timothy Dalton. To, do you know what I mean? Yes. And it wasn't all working on one show. And I, that's the thing that I really bugs me about this is just that it's all from oh because we worked on Broadchurch look at Broadchurch well, you know it, it, it's not only yeah. come that, on but but th think of Spyfall who is the big get that they got in Spyfall Stephen Fry yeah how fast did they kill him off in about five minutes but you oh, have gosh. these actors that are that he's bringing, like you said, from Broadchurch, and he wrote this part specifically for him. To me, that quote right there, I know a lot of people dislike Jodie Whittaker and her acting. I'm not... 
I don't know really. I, I, I have some questions revolving around that. I'm not saying that you have to be a massive Doctor Who fan, but for her to go for a part that she was told to go watch some episodes and she kind of chose to not... And then she gets the part. Did she get the part because she was that good? Or did she I get the part she wasn't, because... I, th- I thought she would have told her not to watch any episodes. Well, I... So in the here, they kind of... Er, in, there was an, uh, an interview that I saw somewhere else. It wasn't this one. But hmm. she said that she went to start watching them. And she was like, you know what? I don't want to get bogged down with this portrayal or that portrayal, and so she chose not to. Well, then that's her own fault. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. That, that's all on her, and I'm sorry. Every, practically every other doctor has at least done some research mm. or, you know, or more doctors than not have done research into the role. Absolutely. Um, I mean, Colin Baker and, talks about that. You know, it's a, it's an, it's, it's an, at this point, it's an institution. Yes, it is. You wouldn't, you, you know, can you imagine, can you imagine if they cast, oh, I don't know, Phoebe Waller Bridge as Joker, right? And she uh-huh. went, oh, you know what? I, I'm not going to do research. I'm just going to go and just play the part how I feel it should be played. It would be in an absolute car crash. Yes. And this is what I mean. Isn't that also the job and the duty of an actor to do their bloody research well, when you to and, act the role? When you and me interviewed uh, uh, Louise Jameson and I asked mm. her about her acts, or, like, you know, learning accents because I said, you know, for me, you know, it's kind of hard for me to like get behind some uh, people who do American accents because I don't feel as though it sounds good. And she's just like, you know, I go to this coach, I go to this coach. I She even said that she watched YouTube videos to try to mm. get certain accents down. And it's like, that's doing the homework. Like, And the, the question is, did Jodie Whittaker earn the role because she did a great job with the whole thing? Or was she hired because Chibnall knew her from Broadchurch? And that clip right there, well, to me... It's, it's definitely B. You know, it, it's the mm, latter, easily. Yeah. So I'm going to play... This is the third clip. However, this one comes before... Actually came before that one. But I feel as though this one had the, like, the better discussion. This is the introduction to... to uh, was it Jacob Anderson or whatever... Uh, hmm. who is going to play a significant role in the up-and-coming series. And uh, I'd love to get your thoughts on what he brings. Jody and Mandip look epic, and I look like the bloke who plays darts with your uncle. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been introduced to John, and Chris, we've heard a lot of rumors about the new season. But can you give us any information about what other new characters will be introduced? Oh, no, because there's a lot of them. I mean, the, um, uh, I guess the thing to say is um, we have a number of guest, amazing guest actors yeah. joining us across the series. Um, and uh, quite a few of them recur across multiple episodes, which is very unusual for this show. Um, other than that, I'm not going to tell you anything about them, to be honest. Maybe there's one we can talk about. Maybe one. So I think it's time to reveal who that is. So have you guessed who it is yet from Game of Thrones? Here's some more hints. He's a musician. He's also an actor, obviously. Unfortunately, he can't be here today, but he has recorded an exclusive video for you all. So please welcome Jacob Anderson. Is Jacob Anderson here. Uh, you guessed it, or, or you didn't. Yeah. But if you didn't, surprise. Uh, I'm very excited to be joining Doctor Who season 13 later this year. Um, and I get to play one of my favorite people I've ever played, Vinda. And uh, yeah, 
I'm sorry I can't be there in Cardiff with uh with Jody, Mandip, John, Chris. Um I this is like a dream. This is like a this is a, a real life childhood dream to be a part of Doctor Who and even more so to 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 be in Doctor Who with Jody and Chris who uh I've worked with before, had a lovely time with, and um and meeting Mandip and John has just been a dream come true. And I think we're all best friends now. This was probably the best first day on set I've ever had because I got there and we had to do some some press photos and uh and right next to where they were doing the photos was the TARDIS and it was the door and the door was closed. And I was like, I'm sorry, before we do anything, I just have to, I just have to do this. It's like a big moment for me. And I walked through the doors of the TARDIS and I was in the TARDIS. And I was like, I could fit. I, I don't know if, if anybody remembers this or, or understands this feeling. Like I felt like I was 14 again, watching Doctor Who, like, m- like my Doctor Who for the first time, just like, how is this real and it's a real thing it's a real (laughs) place that you can go everything's real i touched every single button on the tardis um so yeah this has been a ride this has been a proper dream of mine so very uh very excited not only did i get to go on the tardis and press all the buttons and flip all the levers and the switches but i got my own ship and my own ship had its own world of buttons and levers and switches that you could actually press and you could actually play with and I was like I'm home this is <laughs> this is where I've always wanted to be um so that was like I had lots of very amazing days I've, I've had lots of amazing days working on this and it's the most amazing crew and they've been amazing through a very difficult year for everybody and getting to spend time with Jody again was beautiful. Mandip and John are just my, my heart, my hearts. Um, and yeah, I don't I, like all I have to say about working on Doctor Who is that it has been like one of the ultimate highlights of my career. Is it me or he doesn't sound like that excited, does he really? Oh, no, I, I don't. I feel as though that audio did not encapsulate his facial expressions. He visually looked like a kid at a candy store. There was so much yeah, excitement on that. his face. He, you know, and he is saying uh, you, you, the biggest travesty is he sounds like he would cherish and relish the role of actually playing the doctor. And yes. to me, the casting of this character that he it, he's playing is a shame because there's a strong chance that we're not going to get him as a doctor. He, when I listen to the excitement that he has, he actually had me interested and intrigued for the up and coming season. And in our group chat that, you know, yeah. when uh, we were talking about the uh, trailer, I said, you know, I, I can't believe, you know, gray worm or whatever. Uh, all he says in the, the trailer is wow. Wow. Mm. Like he says it like three times and it's just like, really? Like he, he doesn't sound like that in depth of an actor. I, you know, I know he did a good job in game of Thrones, but I was not impressed. But when I listened to him talk here, he blew my socks off, literally. Just, yeah. I'm excited for series 13, not because of what Chibnall's doing, not because of, you know, the grand scheme or whatever. He sold me on series 13. I have a, a, an excitement for what's going to happen because of his kid like excitement for being in the TARDIS, touching all the buttons, you know, it being his 14-year-old self-dream. Like, 
How old he, is he mm. out of interest? I'd be interested to see what his doctor actually is or who his doctor was because I don't know how mm. old he is. So He is, as of this year, he is 31 years old. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, probably Christopher Eccleston. Yeah, no, he he has me sold. I, I, I am sold on series. It could be a massive flop, but his excitement... Not not cr- what anything Chris Chibnall said, not anything that Jodie Whittaker said, no. not anything well, that John Bishop let's face said. It. <laughs> They've not said much of they really, apart from Chris Chibnall. No. Currently, um, that's the point. What's your opinion on John Bishop? Now that you know who he is, I mean, I know he's a stand-up comedian. I have not watched. I've watched like two minutes of his stand-up. I I feel as though he's going to be. This is just my opinion. Because they don't really go into much of him in the trailer also. I think he's going to be Diet Graham. Mm. It's possible. Diet Graham <laughs> makes him sound like a Coke. Yeah. But I, I think that, or, you know, yeah, just a, a different version of Graham. Yeah, I think you could well be right. All right. What are you most excited to share with the fans this coming series? I'm excited for, for our amazing Whovians to see some incredible interactions with old monsters. Oh! Ah, Nick Durante! <laughs> <laughs> because it's so, that part is just so well, good. I've already said it, you've got to say No, it. I'm not, I'm going to elaborate on it. Hi, Sam. <laughs> I'm going to just say it's so, like, it's so special to work with new monsters that we, you know, we're the first people to interact with these monsters and old monsters, but there's one in particular I'm so excited <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. What's brilliant is this, is, is that story that's going through. So you end an episode, and I know in previous series there's been sometimes a double episode or something, but each each episode's ending on, on, on a brink point where you think, what's going to happen, what's going to happen? And I think that, if I was a fan, that would be the thing that would make this series so different to the, to the previous ones. That's clear that Bishop isn't a fan then. And is it me, or is Mandip way more excited than Jodie Whittaker? Which is ironic, really. <laughs> she's got the main. She's got the main role, but mm. she sounds so unenthused. Or is it me? I, I'm curious if this role of Doctor Who for Jodie is not as much as getting to play Doctor Who. It was to land a role that will propel yourself to. I don't know. Maybe the fame of what David Tennant has gotten since. Mm. Uh, mm. being cast. Kind of Hollywood stepping stone type thing. Yeah. I mean, if it was reversed, if Mandip was the Doctor, you know, I think that would be quite, uh, you know, quite an interesting thing. Because at least I, she sounds excited for it. Well, she sounds mm. excited there, but I mean, I've already had two se- seasons of her um, not saying much. And so I don't know what her actual ability is. I think you could be right because David Tennant was, it was nothing to do about it with being famous for him. He was like, you know, the fact that he could play Doctor Who was just his childhood dream. And, you know, the I, I, I get the feeling the fact he's famous is a nice bit of icing on the cake. But the fact that he's got to play Doctor Who is the main, you know, yeah. thing for him hmm. well and 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 that's who i want to be in the next you know the 14th doctor i want like someone like jacob anderson i want somebody who is giddy at the thought mm. of being the doctor and you know being paid money to do it is you know a bonus, bonus. Hmm. Mm. Right, I'm going to skip to the very end because I have a couple more clips, but I'm just going to skip those. So before we wrap up, everybody, let's have one word from each of you to describe this new season. My word is riveting. Inspirational. Mysterious. <laughs> oh, and an action. It's an action. Uh, I'm going to say um, swarm. Oh. Oh. 
Oh, All right, yeah. I'm intrigued. So what do you think about their one word to describe series 13? Hard to say, really. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really give you a picture of anything. Series, in the series 11 and 12 were definitely not riveting or mysterious, but, you know, we could be surprised. Swarm. Hmm. I'm thinking the uh, invisible enemy. Anyone? Oh, mm. interesting. Interesting. Ooh, I didn't think I forgot about the invisible enemy. Yeah. Good story. That one. Yeah. So uh, with that, so that dropped. Wh- when did that drop? Saturday last week or Sunday of last week? And then mm-hmm. we get and then the news. Monday. Monday. <laughs> And then we get the news Monday. a couple days later that in... Sorry, tw- no, not Monday. It was it, Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. Uh, a couple days later, 2022, according in the, the first... Uh, I, it, it took the BBC longer to come out with a story than the story that I sent to you guys on the group. I thought that was the weirdest thing that the Radio Times had it first before the BBC had it. Uh, the mm. apparently who got the breaking scoop on that was not Radio Times or the BBC. It was actually the Metro. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. And they seem to have had a lot of scoops recently. Uh, interestingly enough. So, yeah, that. I got told that from Legion, so I, I I wasn't aware of that until he said, which is quite interesting, really. I find it quite ironic as well that on the Monday, Cubicle 7, who do the uh, the roleplay game, and they've got the license to do the Doctor Who roleplay game, they announced about oh, two weeks ago that they'd got the license to uh, renew and or extend their license with the BBC to, to do uh, Doctor Who roleplay content. And that the next edition of the role play game was coming out and it was regenerating into a, a faster edition. Uh, with the, if you want, you can pull up some of the art, Brett, to have a look at that if you're interested. Uh, but it's uh, the in the style of the 13th Doctor. Interestingly, the art has been done by Will Brooks. Is it? He has worked for Big Finish in regards art and also Titan Comics. It's basically, yeah, the, the era real obviously, you know, they've got J.D. Whittaker, I think, on the cover, possibly in the TARDIS and such, and it is the, the 30 Doctors TARDIS. Now, I obviously appreciate that they, they're they not privy to the BBC's goings-on, you know, uh, mm-hmm. intimate going on but i find it quite ironic that they announced that monday and uh, oh yeah we've you know this has been announced this is news coming out pre-order it blah 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 and then wednesday oh jody's gone and again looking on <clears throat> sources like who news you know they're talking about that when that was announced that she would she and chibnall would be leaving they trended or doctor who trended on twitter and I, I don't know. I just think it encapsulates this whole era. You know, she comes in, gets massive numbers for the first episode, pulls in, you know, massive uh, ratings and trending on Twitter. And then basically nothing right up until the Timeless Child reveal. Completely splits fandom. Uh, you know, arguably more or less than Star Wars or Star Trek at this point. You know, at least with Star Wars, there's some hope of them changing the current direction of the sh- you know the overall franchise mm-hmm. to actually what fans want. And now nothing after the Timeless Children. And now, oh, she's leaving. So, yes, uh, yeah, it's just a bit, it's sad because like you have both said, you know, that 
she had so much promise and you know we were all hopeful for her in the role and what what she could bring to the role but that's that's not been delivered well dating back to the early years of our podcast you and me you know Stephen Moffat was growing tiresome for both of us. I think you more than me, but for both of us. And it speaks volumes that after the woman who fell to earth, within a couple of episodes, most of the fandom were done with Chibnall. And it just speaks volumes Mm. of Mm -hmm. how, you know, again... And then here's the one thing to, you know, you know, toss in Stephen Moffat's corner. He was doing Sherlock at the same exact time he was doing Doctor Who. Now, granted, the last season of Sherlock, not as good, but he was doing two things at the same time. Chibnall can barely do one thing and he's failing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to read the last couple paragraphs of the Radio Times article. So it says, Pierre Wenger, Winger, director of the BBC drama, paid tribute to both Chibnall and Whitaker, saying the pair have made Doctor Who history with, them, with their time on the show, indebitably and mar- marked on our memories. From Rosa Parks to Ascension of the Cybermen, Chris and Jody have given Doctor Who some of its most life-affirming and tear-jerking moments to date, and we are beyond excited to see what they have in store for us in the new s- series this autumn. Joni's final adventure to mark the BBC's centenary in 2022 is set to be a Doctor Who special to remember. I'd like to thank them both for their incredible work on the show. Whitaker and Chibnall's first episode, The Woman Who Fell to Earth, aired October 2018. For her first two series, The 13th Doctor was accompanied by companions Yaz, uh, you know, Mandeep Gill, Graham, Bradley Walsh, Ryan T- Toss and Cole. Walsh and, Col- Walsh and Cole departed the series in 2021's New Year's Day special with uh, comedian and actor John Bishop set to join Jodie Whittaker and Gill for the upcoming Series 13 as the new companion Dan Lewis. Chibnall's era on the show is also notable for having introduced a new incarnation of the Master, played by Sasha Dwan, the enigmatic fugitive Doctor Joe Martin, and the radically reinventing the Doctor Who's or the Doctor's origin in the 2020 episode "The Timeless Children." Whitaker was voted the show's second most popular Doctor of all time in 2020's RadioTime.com's poll, coming second to David Tennant's Tenth Doctor. Doctor Who was also voted best science fiction show in 2020 by RadioTimes.com readers, beating out competitions from The Mandalorian, Lucifer, and The Boys. What are your thoughts on the last two or four four paragraphs of the, you know, article? Seriously? (laughs) Mm. Yes. I, I, mm. I mean... Massive liberties there, I think. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm so, like I'm are, sort of are, thinking. Are we, are we even inhabiting the same reality as Radio Times writers at this point? Well, here's the thing. I know we talked <laughs> the about the dimension. poll at the time, but I I do remember me and we all, I believe, called into question the legitimacy, and one has to wonder how many times the people at the radio. Times or the BBC voted, cleared out their history and revoted again because yeah. I'm if if you had all thirteen actually fourteen doctors with the War Doctor on there, I'm not seeing Jody's thirteenth Doctor making the top five. Mm. Some could say mm. she could maybe not clear the top ten. I mean, that video I sent you, or oh, the group, Brett, you know, the, with, with the yeah, confused adipose. Yeah, the four-hour, yeah. You know. Uh-huh. No, 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 The confused adipose with, with one you and you got oh, 40 yeah, seconds I into got, it yeah, and stopped. Th- so annoying you know, people, well, yeah. I know, I know. But even them, you know, they're, you know, because they're sort of, what, early 20s, so yeah. they're quite young. Uh-huh. You know, and even even they're saying they're sick of Jody, uh-huh. And they were big proponents of Whitaker's era. So again, you know, 
I I feel it speaks absolute volumes that even the you know the, the diehard fans of her era are going, yeah, no more, thank you, and I'm sorry, Doctor Who beat in you know, or Jody Whittaker's era beating the boys and Lucifer. I came off Twitter. I can't remember when. Uh, I I was ago, exactly maybe? a year ago to this time. I think I was fairly soon after that, but so less than a year. But I saw more stuff about Lucifer and the boys on Twitter than I ever did about Doctor, you know, about Jody, you know, positive stuff about Jody on Twitter. Yeah. I mean, all right, again, that's that's not saying much because it's Twitter, but yeah, I just have a hard time believing that. I, I really think they are kind of making their own reality here. They're spouting stuff that clearly is not true, but I think they think, well, if enough people read it and believe it, then it will be true. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the best information that came out of that article is the date that the final episode for Chibnall and uh, the 13th Doctor will be aired. Like th- to me, that- autumn 2022. Yeah, you know the the and uh, and also right like uh-huh. this is and again this is terrible as well in in one respect that means they're not even going to do a 60th anniversary special episode on the anniversary. Well, they but because that's 2023, mate. Yeah, it just means Chip no. won't be in charge of the 60th anniversary. No. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. No. No, because, yes, yes. No, right, because it's it's six it's six episodes in October, uh-huh. right, this year. A New Year's special. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, no, is it? Hang on. Sorry. Okay, my bad. Maths. Yeah. Ignore me. Okay. I thought, it, I thought they were doing it in 2020. Yeah, but no, because... They're, do, the, they're they're not the doing a, they're be, not they're not doing a Doctor Who 60th anniversary. They're doing a hundred year anniversary of the BBC. It's it's two different things. Mm. So they are doing an anniversary, and and maybe that's the way that they're. Uh, it would be a shame if they're going to try to pass that off as the 60th anniversary. And I, I think there will be massive well, I think revolts. What... I I I I can guarantee if they start you know, grabbing, you know, Tennant Smith and a couple other people to make appearances in this grand last adventure of the 13th Doctor, I think so many people will be so angered by the whole thing. Well, uh, well, uh, I, that's what I assumed that, that they were going to do. That's, that's, I think, what they're thinking of doing. Um, well, we'll have to wait and see. I'm not going to get agitated for something mm-hmm. that I don't know is actually true. I mean, the only thing is, is, is the, the, the bit of information that I, I think you can basically categorically turn again, uh, turn around and say that yes, they are doing this, is because they've stated it's going to be a feature length special. So you know, and when was the last feature length special? They had the Doctor. Yeah, yeah, but the thing is also, mate, what they, what you have to bear in mind, is that they could well still do a proper Doctor Who anniversary story in 2023 because Doctor Who is one of the BBC's biggest successes in terms of like you know the fact that it's been going so long and it's still got such a huge fandom etc that's why they're including it in the 100th uh, BBC anniversary you know because there'll be lots of you know programs to do it and that's just happens to be one I mean, think think about this. When uh, in BBC logistically thinking, when could they possibly do two big, massive anniversary episodes at different times? And this presents them with the perfect time. The 100th celebration of the BBC, and then the following year, the 60th anniversary of Doctor Who. Like, in no time would the stars mm-hmm. align for back-to-back anniversaries. So, you know, granted, if they if this hundredth anniversary 
with the celebration of you know Chris Chibnall or whatever, if this is bigger than the 60th, then I will have a problem with it. But until that actually comes to pass, I'm totally fine mm-hmm. with this being a feature length thing as long as the 60th anniversary actually pays tribute to the actual show, not the amorphous entity that has been producing the show. Mm. Yeah, that's fair. Mm. It may well be that they use the um, 60th anniversary as a finale to the first series or as a start of the first series of the new doctor. Well, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's possible that it's going to be the new doctor because, you know, they've obviously said that the finale for, you know, the, the, the centenary thing that is going to be Jodie's last. So if anything, the 60th will potentially be the start of the new era. Hmm. Which what, what a celebration that would be. And I just, hopefully mm. it won't be like, you know, David Tennant, like constantly asleep for most of the episode. Like to me, and that's why no. I hate Christmas invasion. I hate Christmas invasion so much. It's because we're getting a brand new doctor and he's just mindlessly being dragged around and then he falls asleep. Um, what's your feeling on because I know people have been banding around, you know, what doctor they like to see in the new role and stuff. Uh, what would your feeling be? B to Natalie Dormer taking the role. I don't know who that is. I think she's good. You've watched Game of Thrones, right? Yeah. Mm, what's her name? Mar- was it Marjorie? Martell? You know the young girl who was... Was she the one that was going to uh, be married to Joffrey? With... No, to Tommen, the younger brother, you know, who then jumps out the window in the end. Uh Yeah. Her, her. I, that there's been some talk and speculation of her maybe taking the role in, 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 on the bookies and getting quite a lot of interest. Uh, I mean, she can act, you know, and she is a good actor. And I think she, she's, I think she's got what it takes. I think she's got the, you know, the, the, sex appeal for the you know the the fans or people who who want that but uh you know again she can act so i think she'd make a pretty good incarnation mm-hmm. uh, I I, she, I, do, she doesn't speak to me i i, I her no? her being in the game of thrones doesn't stick out at all um i mm. give me do you know who would be my dream cast and they're probably not even uh, doing any sit-ins for or whatever dream cast right here. Sean mm. Pertwee. Can you mm. imagine? Oh, I mean, <laughs> he could have that whole, huh? The face looks kind of familiar. Nose isn't as big yeah. as, I mean, it's just, they could have, so, yeah. if the show wanted to be fun and, I know he is a white male and that's not a good thing for whatever, but it, that would be, yeah. if the show wanted to be fun, bring fun back. Fun has yeah. not been in the yeah. show since uh, uh, Peter Capaldi left. Yeah. I mean, and, you, well, that's what I mean. They could do so much reverential respect to to john as well you know within that by casting sean yeah i'd love to see how because isn't sean pertwee a fan of the show i believe so or a fan of he doctor is. who it'd be interesting to see you know his take and almost not channeling john but channeling part of him in the role and then having his own tweak on it i think would be quite interesting because also isn't he about 50 odd now is he quite, yeah. is he getting on a he's bit he's either in his late 50s or early 60s yeah so yeah again you know you could have an, a, a slightly older doctor um, they could bring but, back the who mobile is... they could bring back the who yeah. <laughs> all right well from the latest doctor who news to titan comics missy or you know doctor who's cross out missy 
issue number four. Again, this is written by Jody Hauser. The majority of the art is done by Roberta Ingrata. And uh, um, just real quickly for a refresher for myself, I had to go back to, because it's been such a long time. This uh, comic came out, I believe, two weeks after it was supposed to come out. So it got pushed or delayed for some reason, whatnot. So I had to go back and figure out where we were after I started uh, look, reading it. And where we left off was Missy searching for the key to time in you know 1970s or 1980s unit. And the master, the Roger Delgado master, disappearing. And he is on his way searching for the brig because he is going to kill him. And then, of course, just like every single one of the Titan comics previously, Missy and the Master have traveled through their past to discover the location of the key, which unlocks the vault controlling the key to time. In the third doctor's lab at Unit HQ, Missy has finally found what she was looking for, but the Master also found what he was looking for, revenge. And, of course, Missy, as portrayed, you know, the female carnation, the Master, the cunning swordsman, which, again, I love that they keep on... Uh, br- introducing the fact that the Roger Delgado master is a cunning swordsman because it is so common in these four comics that he is very swashbuckly, I guess you could say. Twelfth Doctor, which is, besides a brief appearance with, which may or may not have occurred during the uh, series eight or nine, I know it wasn't ten, but series eight or nine, I don't know because I, I've watched it once. They're good. They're okay. They're not the best, but I don't remember it. But besides him making an appearance, this is supposed to be more of like a Twelfth Doctor and Missy book. But even though it is a master, and you know, we started off the the series with the Third Doctor lecturing the space prison, be careful with the master, and you know that. Then of course that was like the last time we've seen him and so you know when is the 12th doctor really going to come into fruition and finally i will tell you in this part four the master plan it is finally revealed so we come back and missy is you know and she comes across a unit soldier and she says that she is doctor who and he's just like wait i've seen you before and um you're not a female and so she's Watts takes her umbrella. Or first off, she p- points out, it's like, well, what, like the, the question marks, don't they give that away? Don't they show that I'm the doctor? You know, the question mark that she has painted on her dress or skirt. And so finally she takes her umbrella and she swats the walkie out of his hand and then bashes him over the head and then goes back to searching for the Delgado Master. At which point in time we transition to the Delgado Master lurking in a shady corridor or behind a wall. It's really not specific to his actual location, but he does see the brig. The brig is just kind of minding his own business, looking at paperwork as he walks down a unit corridor, which I'm, I guess you could say a little bit annoyed because it does not look like your standard unit corridor. It looks like the kind of corridor that they had when they were up in the space prison. So it's just, I'm not sure the inventiveness of the artist was really there or they really got everything. Like, you know, so far I've been pleased. The part three of the story was really kind of hard for me. But uh, anyway, that being said, the Delgado master has his uh, tissue compression device out ready to get revenge on the brig. Missy stops him, tells him that, you know, stop. And she's just like, how dare you stop me from getting my revenge? Maybe I'll get my revenge on you. And he points the tris- tissue compression tissue compression device at Missy. Of course, he doesn't know that she is a future version of himself. And he says, well, of course. And she goes, of course, tucked inside that barrel of monkeys. Because she just said, oh, you know, why don't you go do that? But uh, it'd be a whole bunch of barrels of monkeys. And so she says, of course, tucked inside that barrel of monkeys will be that pesky key we've been searching for. Might be a bit hard to reduce it to almost nothing. And he says, and yet it might still be worth it. And so finally they decide to go along their way. 
The brig bumps into the doctor. They hear the sound of the TARDIS taking off. The third doctor and the brig run into his workroom, which again, there's a monitor that almost looks very Star Trekish, but it is, it, this does not look like the third doctor's workroom anyway. So he searches and he says, that's very curious. Everything is where it should be. And he says, and then so the brig says, well, if there's nothing eminently wrong, he goes, oh, don't, I don't believe I said that. And he goes, well, if there's nothing immediately wrong, I need to talk to you about this report. And so then, of course, we get back into the vortex where Missy and the master are talking back and forth. And at this point in time, as Missy kind of like suades the Delgado master's hands off of the controls, he acknowledges that he's known all along that he has not been working with the doctor, but he has been working with another incarnation of himself, basically saying that he has known that she was him all along. After they do that, sadly, you know, she, she's a little disappointed that the rubber duckies on the top of her hat weren't uh, convincing enough to make him believe that he was a do- she, she was a doctor. And so the, the, the Delgado master basically just slices the uh, rubber ducky in half, at which point, uh, after they start fighting each other and he start charges at her again, we find that actually the entire time Missy has been working with the 12th Doctor the entire time. And this was the plan, is to spring the Delgado master out of prison to help her find the key to unlock these doors to the key to find the key to time. And the Delgado master feels somewhat betrayed. And basically, and so she says, of course, you know, basically she's just like, well, I could backstab both of you, but you know, with you basically being right here, it'd be really hard to do that because, and so she says, say something nice as she holds the sword to the Delgado Master, and he says, together we will burn whole galaxies down to the barest atoms. Their death scream shall be the sweetest song of terror the universe has ever heard. And then the Capaldi doctor holds his hand out and says, I'm trying to trust you, Missy. I really am. And then the next scene, we see that the Delgado Master back in the storm cage c- containment facility, saying that she's, he's very disappointed in her and she goes back to the TARDIS. The uh, Twelfth Doctor and Missy are having a cup of tea, and they're talking back and forth with each other. And uh, he tells her, you know, kind of how proud she is of him. She kind of looks a little content to some point, but uh, you know, she was doing that all the way throughout uh, series tw- ten of Doctor Who. So finally, the Twelfth Doctor says the key. And so he holds out his hand and she gives him the key to the big doors that will lead to the key at a time. But uh, in her blouse pocket, she pulls out a piece of mm, putty something that has the impression of the key. And it says, the end, question mark, which I will tell you, uh, the, the, the first uh, issue I was fully in on. The second issue I feel as though it was just an extended gag of Missy just messing with people, pretending to be the doctor and also uh, the master. The third one I felt as though it got really old after a while. And then this one just wraps the whole thing up in a nice bow, basically saying this was a f- just this was just a fun adventure. There was no substance to this. Well, I guess you could say to get to the key to get to the key to time type of a thing. Yes, there was some substance to this. But for the most part, this was Missy just having fun. I would give this, the whole series, uh, probably an 8 out of 10. It's a great series. There's lots of levity in the whole thing. It is not serious. I would love a continuation of this story over... Well, I, I'm curious if they're going to put this on hold and we're going to get a Yaz, Dan, and 13th Doctor series. It'll speak volumes for the popularity of the 13th Doctor if we go into the 12th Doctor Missy season two and we skip that. That will speak massive volumes as we talked about myself, Liam, and Humphrey uh, previously. Now, 
on to uh, the road to 200. I have taken some clips. They are not serious clips. They are not uh, deep clips. Uh, well, uh, a couple of them could be considered that. But this is our road to 200 where Liam interviewed uh, Legion and Legion interviewed the rest of us uh, in a very serious, you know, sometimes tear-jerking moment, which I will tell you is a beautiful beautiful uh, lead up to episode 200. We'd love for you to listen to them. They are not the normal Dr. Lambo podcast episode. So I can imagine if you do want to you know, pause on that, I totally agree or understand. Uh, but uh, I would uh, recommend that you give them your time and listen and uh, because lots of care was taken into uh, the production and to the interview. And uh, I do think that they're great. So with that, here is some uh, random cuts from those moments. But no, I, I'm very much looking forward to this. It's, it's a different sort of bit of content. So that we, uh, I mean, yeah, like you were saying yesterday, you're going to chuck it in from 195 on. But yes, I've been, I've been looking forward to this because apart from Liam, mm -hmm. and I knew Humphrey very briefly when I was at college, uh -huh. but not really, we didn't move in the same social circus at all. Uh, I've been looking forward to getting to to know you and Hump a lot a lot more and a lot more in depth. Yes. Well, Which... and I, I will tell you, I was uh, listening to because I'm trying to find clips for episode 200, and if if I'm gonna do that, I'm going to need to probably start immediately. So I've been listening to <laughs> some of our older podcasts, and I will tell you, <laughs> um, and I know you were going through a divorce during one of them, or were just unhappy but you sound night and day different. different and i will tell you not to knock you you you, it, you sound like you're having more fun also what? yeah 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 like like now i'm hoping you're saying like now because i'm oh, having, yeah, having yeah. a lot of fun now yes <laughs> back then well, it's like oh god no well, no, because <laughs> but... I mean, the, the funny part was, is I was listening to one and, you know, I knew that you and Liam were friends and you were bouncing off of each other. And I at times felt like a third wheel because it was like inside joke after inside joke. And I'm like, ah, uh, uh. yeah, but like I've I look forward to you. I've enjoyed the past year plus since your return. It's just oh, thank you. Made the podcast so much more fun oh thank you it yeah. genuinely means a hell of a lot somebody loves me there we go jolly good beverage of choice so, um well I've got so hey question is full mm -hmm. fat zero or diet oh full fat man all the way no i think zero <laughs> tastes better hey i think zero tastes better nah it doesn't have as much I don't know, carbonation, and it just tastes a bit, I don't know, again, tangy. There's something off mm. about it. Mm. But, yeah, first opinion. Or... Yeah, it is. It is. Brett has a new toy that he's been playing with uh, that I have to say is amazing. Is it? I listened to, yes, uh, he's got a, I think it's a deep breather. Mm. It is so good. Yeah. <laughs> He sent nice. me the rough edit of mine and his interview, and mm. it sounds outstanding. Awesome. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for your time. Thank yep, you likewise. for your honesty. And thank you for a very pleasant chat. Mm -hmm. When that stops being a shit. So I've got the, on my Mac, um, it keeps going into narrator, and I don't know why, you know, double tap it accidentally, and it goes, well, what are you saying? Uh -huh. Oh, we're going to write this down for you. And I don't need it to do that. I need to turn it off. But yes, <laughs> back to my original point. I will do the intro. Um, and then we will, we will literally jump straight into it. Mm -hmm. So, are we sitting comfortably, boys and girls? Indeed. There, there, there. I've got to be tongue tied then. No, I was so uh... drunk. Were you? Oh, genuinely, somebody, uh, going back to the college that me, you and Liam went to, I got called up one morning uh, after starting a heavy session. I mean, do you want to go and see some Shakespeare? And I was like, yeah. So I ended up at the Royal Shakespeare Theatre 
being strapped upon Abe and half cut watching Romeo and Juliet. Goodness. It was great. It was genuinely amazing. And then I we will do that. I can't speak. I will be back and we will do a couple more questions and then wrap okay. up. Okay. So I'll wet my whistle. You, while you're doing <laughs> you know, if you need to do anything, yeah, I'll be about five minutes. Okay, well, I'll go and wet my whistle then. <laughs> and what we will do. Excellent stuff. 80 minutes, which is where we've been lying for most of these interviews, even with a pee break. Nice. We were talking about this in your interview, so I really hope Brett releases these in... Don't say not true. It's the only reason I don't watch your dog videos is because you're always fucking watching dog videos. I do not watch my £600 life either. No, you're right, because you've seen it before. And quite frankly, it just makes me hungry. <laughs> you are. A good girl. It makes you hungry. It, honestly, it does. I mean, I'm fat myself, but watching fat people being told that they can't eat just makes me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, you're going to die of a heart attack. Do you know what that needs? Bacon sandwich. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's nice, Al. Yes. I don't know. I, I I do worry for people's sanity who sit there and go, oh, I'm going to watch reality TV. Why? Surely there's enough reality yeah. for you as is. I'm going to watch Love Island. Why just watch porn? It's quicker. That needs to be on a t-shirt. I'm sorry. I actually found it on my Dropbox mm. about three and a half years ago. Ooh. The recipe for the cake. I will be uh, hitting you up for that later on. It was a Rachel Allen one. Mm -hmm. This is what my old mother-in-law uh, used to bake. Mm -hmm. Happy wife, happy life, right? Happy wife, happy life. Yeah. There's one rule when it comes to having a wife. And that is no matter who is in the wrong, it is always your fault. Well, I mean, you know, you could destroy the, you know, because if you fight on Namek, which is the planet, you could destroy the planet with a, uh... Freezes attack. If you dodged his final yes. finisher, it would destroy the planet. Yes, it would. And then you'd 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 be fighting on magma. And if you're playing as regular Goku, and you finish that final move, you'll have to uh, you, you'll have to get all these recipes, you know, now and link them in, in the bloody podcast notes. <laughs> I don't know where they're from. They're from cookbooks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you'll have to try and uh, hunt them down and turn them to Brett so we can link them yeah. in, the, uh, in the show notes. Yeah, yeah. So, but, um, yeah, no. you know, I'm sure uh, all the kids want to uh, make, you know, banana cake tardises and stuff. No, I don't mind the Americans. Our, our, our chief editor and mugwump is, is an American gentleman. We love you, Brett. Mm. But um, when it comes to American rumors about a British show, but just take it with a great big pinch of salt. You have been listening to the Doctor Who Alhambra podcast. Doctor Who is owned and trademarked by the BBC. Doctor Who Alhambra is not affiliated with the BBC or Big Finish. No infringement is intended. Visit our website at alhambrapodcast.weebly.com or email the show at alhambraaudio at gmail.com Tweet us at Alhambra Podcast. That is A L H A M B R A Podcast. Thank you.